Hello everybody, this is Sharon A.K. Harris and today we're going to play with Quick Cure Clay and it's it's the black Quick Cure Clay that we're going to be using and um, just to let you know is uh, I like a surface because I'm going to be heating this so this is a, a little counter leftover piece of wood and I put my craft sheet on top it will not burn when we heat it. So uh, first I'm going to do is take the clay out and condition it a little bit with my hands. Now it's a little messy, so I use, and you should reuse rubber gloves because there is fiberglass in it. So I'm just conditioning it, getting it a little warmed up and get the molecules moving. And I'll put it down. So today, just to let you know, I'm gonna be making a hot. And now I'm gonna take the Ranger brayer and I'm just gonna roll it out. Now, if you don't have a brayer, you can just use your hands. You can also use a pasta machine if you wanted to. I'm going to flip this over and roll, roll it on both sides. We don't want it too thin because we don't want it to break, but yet again, we don't want it too thick. We're going to make a beautiful wall hanging, and I think this is going to be a fun project. And I don't care if my fingerprints are in it or what because it gives more texture and I'm all about texture. Today we're going to make a hot with this quick cured clay. And I put a piece of plastic over it so I don't get my brayer all dirty. Because the black is messy, but it's so worth it. It's so dramatic and beautiful. So just roll it out like you would a pie. Use your hands or a bottle. I'm using a brayer by Ranger. And it works great. So I think that's pretty good. Now, you can shape it with your fingers if you want or with toothpicks. But you look how beautiful that is already. So if I wanted a hot shape, all I do is kind of start shaping it. You can do a hot. That's easy enough to do. I'm using the back of a ranger brush just to get it going. But if you let's say you don't want to do that. So let's say you have cutouts, cookie cutouts. You can just use that and press it down. Give it a little wiggle and take it off. So just to expedite things and make things a little quicker. I'm going to do that. So now what I'm going to do is just get a little, get my ranger brush and just grab that edge and pull it off. And we get a cutout. But like I said, you can just, you can just do it with your fingers. But I figured I'd move things along so you're not bored and I just scraping it off. Now Ranger has a scraper you can use as well. But do I have it on hand? No. Okay, so that looks really good. So for so this is really an easy project. It's not hot at all. And I'm just kind of tapping the edge, kind of softening it so it's not so high because it's not real consistent and I don't want it to be. But I'm gonna show you how to do some filigree work. And take that little ball of clay you got left over and put it on the side. I do need a toothpick. So just clean off your edge a little bit. If you can't see it well, use your toothpick, it works great. Okay, so now I would like to make this kind of lacy looking. So all I'm gonna do is make little squiggles like that. And I'm gonna put other elements on it, but I wanna just show you how easy it is to work with. This is really great clay because it's hot as a rock. You can do all kinds of sculptures with it, make little holes, little lines. And little squiggles. If you notice you have a space, throw a hole in it. So you're not to worry. I like to use little U-shapes in both directions. Put a little hole and you get this beautiful filigree effect. Now, I don't think I wanna do the whole thing with filigree. I'm gonna do half of it and then we're gonna put some elements on the other side that we'll make. So I wanna make sure I can hang this. You could glue a uh, wire on the back. So but you can also put a, uh, a string in it if you wanted to. So you could put a hole right there at the top and you could use it or not. 
it's on you, you know, it's whatever you want to do. So I'm using little shapes. And I can always close any of these up if I don't like them and they're too, if there's too many. So I'm doing that. Make little poke holes just for texture. Makes it interesting. Anything that you can think of, you do. Little lines. So already this is beautiful. And you can readjust your edge. Now, quick cure clay will expand a little bit, but not a lot. But just so you'll know. Okay, that looks good. Little hole there. That's pretty beautiful already. I'm gonna make this hole a little bit bigger. So you can see, look how lacy that looks. It is already stunning. Okay, so now what I wanna do is take some of my clay and roll it out into a worm. And um, we're gonna cure this, by the way, with a heat gun, and that's all it needs, but it needs a heat gun, and I'm using the Ranger heat gun. So I'm gonna make a snake right now. So it's, this is all easy for a beginner, not a problem. And I'm just gonna use my little toothpick and cut little lengths that are all about the same and make little balls. And just put them all in a row. I'm not really big on consistency, but some are. So you'd be, uh, I just cut it up in about even pieces and it always gets pretty consistent. But sometimes I get a small one like this one's gonna be small. That's okay. Sometimes I want graduated balls. So we'll just do a couple. Okay, so I'm gonna take my, my toothpick and I think I'm gonna put a, a little ball right there. And another little ball. Oop, that one got away from me. Another little ball right there. And maybe three, three's always good. Maybe one right there. And give it just a little tap, that's all. It'll attach. So now we get a little dimension. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of that worm and I'm gonna make it a little bit, a bigger worm. And I'm gonna make a leaf. So see how cute that is, just a little worm. And I'm gonna turn my, my little um, project because I think it's a little easier. And I think I'm gonna start it right at that hole. And what I'm gonna do is make a leaf. And all I do is make a worm and push down in the middle. And then just pull out. And you'll get an automatic leaf. What, with the leaf, all you have to remember is make sure the edge is pointy. Like that. And pull it out. So now I'll make another one. Make a worm. And maybe I'll have it come a little bit in this direction. Oop, still stuck to me. It sticks really well, <laughs> as you can see. And my fingers are way down here, so I got shot fingers. So anyway. But, and then just pull out again. Just think of a leaf, just pull out. They're all different, so it doesn't matter. They don't have to look exactly the same. The only thing you've got to make sure of is you've got a point at the end. People will know it's a leaf. Wider at the bottom. But then if it's a turn leaf, it isn't always wider at the bottom, right? Okay, so we get a nice little leaf there. Now uh, let's make another leaf. Everything's beautiful with threes. So we're going to make another one. And... I think I'll put this one up on the side like that and have it kind of come out of there. And again, have it come around and push back. And don't be afraid to turn your project. So now we're getting some great dimension. 
you can work this as much as you want. And just make sure, and you can use the tip of your toothpick to get that beautiful texture of the leaf pointing out. And you can work with the background as well. So in other words, you can dig down a little bit. And you just keep playing the way you like. I'm digging down now, and I'm really getting some thickness to my leaf. Now maybe I want a little leaf here. So what I'll do is I'll just go right into the clay itself and lift up and just pull out and using the actual base that we made as a leaf. And all I have to do is make sure the striations look right. And people will know it's a leaf. And this one could use a little better tip. Just pulling it in, pulling it out. You can do all that. Now, if I want, I can put more filigree around it. Or I could even put more dots, you know, little uh, round balls. So that looks really nice. I really like it. So I'm going to put this aside, and now I want to get a little more advanced. I want this to just set because we're going to make another element to attach, but I wanted to show you how to do that. So let's put this aside. Okay. So what I want to do is make a rose. So I got another craft sheet. These craft sheets are great. You can cut them up and I'll use them for different for different projects because sometimes you don't want such a big one like in this case so I'm what I'm going to do is take a little bit more of that black and roll it in a ball and put it down okay so I'm going to take this little glob of clay I made and I'm just going to kind of swirl it a little bit just going slowly in a circle so this is a real easy beginner rose but yet it looks like a rose. And I alternate the petals, so if you wanna go back and really get fancy, you can alternate the petals. And I'll even use my fingers a bit so it breaks up a little bit, because you want it different. I mean, it already looks like a rose and it's nothing, really. So I'm gonna take my toothpick now and just kind of the thicker end. I got one with a thicker end and a skinnier end. And I'm just gonna kind of swirl it a little bit more. And automatically you get a rose, really easy. So this is a beginner's rose, I would call it. You can pull out from the edge and that makes those little petals on the edges that make it really realistic looking. And turn it. It's easier to work by pulling towards yourself than it is pulling away from yourself. So this is a quick, like I say, a quick little beginner's rose, and we're going to do a little more advanced rose in a minute. And now I can use my fingers to just soften it down a little bit. And voila, we got a cute little rose. You can even intensify it a little bit by going in the middle and lifting any areas. If you want, you don't have to. It'll still look like a rose. Okay, I'm going to heat this one, and then we're going to make another rose, and I'm going to show you how we use them. I'm using my Ranger heat gun. And it doesn't take long, so you... You put it on the side, you kind of heat the whole thing up, and you will see the color change, but there's also a, a, a ember that goes through it, a ribbon of, fi of um, I don't know how you would say it, it's a ribbon of heat. So I'm just going to heat it up, and you'll see it change color a little bit. And it doesn't take long, believe me and it's hot as a rock, but it's very hot to touch when you first, when it first cures, it's very hot. I just want to make sure you can see this well. 
and you can see it's already starting to cure right there. You see how it's changing a little bit? Just kind of chase it a little bit. And there's actually a ribbon of, you would see fire basically, a ribbon of heat. I don't know what you'd call it, but you'd see it if it was dark and but anyway, it's all cured. Just making sure I got it good. There. It's cured. And now I let it cool a bit because it is hot. Don't touch it. Put your hand over it if you just like to feel it, you know, like that. Cup your hand. You can feel the heat. It's, it's quite hot. So we're just going to let this, you can see I can lift it and move it. And it's hot as a rock, but it's hot. Okay, so this time we're going to do a more advanced rose. So what I'm going to do is get my worm and just pull petals. So, and I'll, all I do is pinch the worm, the little bit, and then make it around like an oval. So you'll see right here. And just push it into your craft sheet. Take another little piece, pinch it in your fingers. And these are the bigger ones. These are the outside petals. I mean, they don't have to be perfect because I have never seen a rose that was perfect. They're all got their own personalities, including yours. So we're going to just pinch that out. And put it down. And this last one, same thing. Okay, so that's our first area of a rose. And I'm just kind of pulling it out with my fingers. It's probably gonna to be too big for my little project, so I'm gonna pull it in a little bit. So you can manipulate it and make this part of the center and make sure it's gonna be able to fit our little project. And I've kind of needed a lot smaller, so I might just cut out some of it just with my toothpick and take some off. So this is good, so you can see how you can change things. You're not stuck because um, you can't figure it out. You just change it, make it a little smaller. I like that. Okay, we'll just take that off. And just kind of manipulate it with my finger to make the, the flat, as if you're looking at it as a painting at this point. We'll sculpt it in a minute. And you can pull in where the petals are. See how I'm pulling in? So this is, like I said, this is a little more advanced piece. And you could just do the easy one or you can do uh, get a little fancy. Okay, so it's more of my clay. I've made jewelry out of the clay. I've made sculptures out of the clay. I mean, your imagination is the only thing that's gonna stop you from making beautiful things. It's just, just think about it. Look at other people's sculptures and see something you like, you can do it. And I'm just gonna pull this off right in here. Just kind of make it a petal and then turning it a little bit. And now I'm getting a little lift, see that? And these are more of the inside petals. And just kind of lift it. So now you're getting dimension, real sculpture here. It's all about texture and dimension. People love that. So I'm just pinching it, shaping the little smile. Basically, it's a smile. So it comes out like that. I don't know what you would call it. There. See that? Lift it up now. Start dimension, creating some dimension. Poke it down. You can lift up a corner, see? Now I'm gonna work pretty quickly because, you know, you don't wanna sit here and watch me all day, but you wanna get the idea. So let's get another petal. And there, like I said, these petals don't have to be perfect. They just gotta be fairly, uh, shaped like a like a petal now you know a lot of times just look at a rose it'll help you as well go online and just take references of roses just so you get the idea of what it, they look like when you're creating it it's basically just a little 
smiley shape. Okay, just a little swoosh. Okay, so I'm gonna take that one with my, and put that inside there. And I'm bringing it in a little bit more. Do you see how it's lifting? That's beauty right there. More lifting. Now I'm gonna lift the edge a little bit here on this one. And I'm just using a toothpick and bringing it in. So there's more dimension. It's all about dimension in sculpture. I'm turning it, just lifting. Even if it doesn't show up that great, it doesn't matter. Even if it blends into the next petal, that's fine. Let it go. It's called the universe talking to you, saying, hey, that looks good just the way it is. Leave it alone. And then this one coming out and then lift it up a little bit. And then make that one lift. And you can see how I roll it around a lot. And just lift. I need a skinnier side and then lift use my finger to soften it you can also sand this clay you can paint the clay you can do so much with this clay I, I can't say enough about it I really love it I've done so much work with this clay and go to my um, my Facebook page Sharon AK Harris and on Facebook, find out, and you'll see so many references on the clay. Also join the Quick Cure Clay group, and you'll, so many people with so many beautiful, wonderful ideas. Okay, I like that. Now I wanna do a center, and it's kinda of like a teardrop shape, like that. And just put that in the middle. I can always adjust it, I don't care. It's not working out right. Just push it in. Oh, look how beautiful that worked out, I like that. Just kind of tickle it in there good. And I got a beautiful rose. This edge could be a little bit better. So I'm just gonna move that over, pull this one out a little bit again, and then lift. See, you can change anything and make it go underneath this one. You want your petals to alternate. And I'm just lifting now. I just want to make sure everything's lifted up nicely. So when I cook it, it'll be all set. Okay, so there's an advanced rose. So you're all advanced now. And now I gotta get my heat gun. And I'm gonna heat this rose. Just wanna make sure I'm just the way I want it to look. Looks good. So now again, I'm just gonna heat it up and just wait for the change. And there it goes. And I'm gonna chase it. Now, when you're you're working with the clay, you do want to be in a well ventilated area because there is some fume, and when you cook it, and um, so just you know that goes with almost anything you use or not. You really should be in a well ventilated area, and that's done. It actually would cure all on its own if you wanted to wait a while, but. Once you get it started, it keeps going. And as you can see, it's cured and it's done. It's very hot, but it's done. Now, if you wanted to, you could sand it or do any of that that you would like to do to it. I'm gonna move this over now and get the other piece back. So here's our beautiful hot that we made. And now I'm gonna take 
the uh, we could take the abstract hat and put that right on there like that off center and look how beautiful that looks I could even make more leaves and go over I might even do that let's look at the other one on here oh I kind of like it because it's a little bigger and I think it goes nicely with that so I'm just gonna take that and it is pretty hot still but I think I can deal with it and press that into the hot a little bit give it a wiggle okay so you can add elements to an element that's already been cooked. You're not stuck. And I think I want one more leaf to come over or two. Let's just check it out. So I'm just gonna make a leaf. And my toothpick. And I just want a leaf coming over the rose because um, when you put things over things it gives more dimension and people really love it so let's make that a, a beautiful little round rose leaf because they're kind of rounded at the bottom and pointy so I'm just gonna kind of come back put in my my veining so you can add your elements wet or I could cook this and then add it. It's just a matter of what you want to do. I'm just going to push that in. Oh, I also wanted to show you hard like a rock these dry. So I'm going to just clip that off. And then lift it. And make, let's turn this so I can see what I'm doing and make a leaf come over and give it some dimension. See how it's curling and I love that. And I'll just take this and move it over the leaves that are underneath that we made. All right, and I'm gonna put it right into that groove of this little flower so it comes over and becomes part of the whole creation. Okay, I think that's beautiful. Less is more sometimes. Be careful of not overdoing. Well, let's say you wanted to add something later. You can, but I think that's enough, personally. I'm going to get my heat gun, and let's start from the bottom and work our way up. There it goes, you see it starting? It puffs up a little bit. You see how soft and rounded the pieces are? I, I really like that, to be honest with you. Very desirable. You don't want hot edges. You can always sand if you wish. That is always available to you. So now I'm gonna chase it a bit. the textures will start coming out. And all the little holes and filigree will start popping through and look beautiful. And you'll see it still cooks even when I take it off because it's actually a, a running burn that goes through. So, okay, so we're all pretty much done with our project. Let's lift that up and voila, all done. So now we want to, uh, I would like to make it even more beautiful. And now I want to add some alloys for color. I'm going to use some gilded, which is a gold. We're going to use foundry. Okay, so now I'm ready to add some color. So just for the heck of it, I'm gonna turn it over so I don't get distracted by the mess. And I'm gonna use some gilded and some foundry alloy. 
I mean, and I use alcohol and a little jaw so I can move it the way I want. So I'm getting my jaw, put some alcohol in it. This is 91%. Okay. Clean my brush. Okay, so now what I want to do is put some, I'm going to use the uh, alloy first. So be sure to shake it really well, get all those molecules and beautifulness all mixed up, and then just put a little puddle beside your project. And I'm just going to take my brush and just hit the edge. And look, it looks like metal. Now see these little pricker things that came off? That doesn't matter, they'll come right off with a little sanding. Don't even really have to sand it, you probably just break them off. They're very thin. But look how beautiful that looks. Let's say you wanted to do half of it in, in the, in the uh, foundry, you could. But this looks really nice. And if you go over one of your elements, not a big deal because we'll be painting them anyway. I'm gonna do silver, I think, on some of the elements just so you can see what you can do. So black and silver look so beautiful together. I mean, black and gold, black and gold and black and silver look so beautiful together. And I'm just painting it on. Be sure to get it all the way around and turn your project because you'll see areas you missed. So it's, it's uh, still pretty hot. So I'm just gonna put that down and just paint the way I can see and get that done. But it's amazing, you don't need a kiln, but it looks like you had something in the kiln, it has very high quality. It's a beautiful, easy um, clay to deal with. I've done so many things with this clay. I don't think there's much you can't do with it. Okay, so I'm gonna just see what I can do with these edges. See, these just snap off because they were just left over. But you can sand it if you wanted to. And I'm gonna take a bigger brush and use some of the foundry, which is like a silver. And I'm just gonna use it on the side of my brush and just hit the tips of the rose. See how beautiful that is? You can also use pearl, alcohol ink pearls. You can use acrylic. There's not, I don't think there's anything you can't use with this, um, with this clay. But do you see how beautiful that looks? The, com the, the contrast is, um, is really nice. I'm just gonna use a little alcohol because it's not jumping off my brush easily. There, now it is. It just needed to be a little juicier. Get all those tips. It doesn't have to be perfect. You want it to be just lovely. It looks more beautiful and more realistic when it isn't quite so perfect. Your, your foundry alloys will activate with alcohol, so if it dries, you're not just done. You just activate it again with some alcohol, see? And just come back. Okay, that looks good. And now your rose petals really pop out. And this one could use a little more. And you can go over it and over it as many times as you want to get more and more luster. Okay, so now what I wanna do is those petals finished. And I, I sometimes will take it up and look at the edge and see if there's some areas that could use a little more, like in here. 
and get the edges. You gotta turn a sculpture, you really do. You have to turn it and see all the edges because if someone's looking at it from another direction and it won't look as good. All right, that looks pretty nice. Okay, I like that. Now we need some pizzazz on the, the petals. So what I'm gonna do is actually go over the whole petal with boundary because I like the, the um, silva and I like the shimmer and we're gonna go over it again Oh, there's that little ball I lost. Oh, we'll make it into a flower. Nothing ever goes to waste. I'm gonna just kind of dance over these pet, these little leaves that we made. And these little dots. These are my three little, there's my three little dots. Okay. All right, I like that a lot. Now, if I want it blacker, it's not a big deal. All I do is use some black. Now I think I want to use some black. And this just reinforces the black of the clay. So I'm just going to put a drop up here or two of that alcohol ink black. And I just take my brush and tickle that in there. And I can get a little more drama. I also like a little more black out here. Now the, the clay is porous, so it's really gonna absorb the black. So it'll suck it right up. But it is such a dramatic look. Look at that. And I kinda like that ball right there, it's interesting. And just get a little darker. I like that a lot. Now I'm going to come back and go over some of this gilded area. I'm not sure how much because the gilded will usually really take the take over. But if you go real quick, you can get a little bit on there. See that? Get some texture change. And you just go back and forth as you wish. I live in Arizona, so I dry out very quickly here. So I'm just using a little at a time. And I'm just carving out that beautiful little ball. And I think I would like to do that up here. So I'm just gonna carve out these little balls and let them stay foundry. And just take your time. Put some dark in there. Keep turning it. See it? any areas you can readjust to make it a little more dramatic. And you can also come back and do some more on your, on the uh, alloys if you want. I kind of like them soft and go in this direction. There's another leaf. Let's go and kind of carve out a little bit of the leaf a little bit so it goes underneath. And just let it be like a little hint. And voila, look at that. That's a beautiful wall hanging. I love that. So you can hang that right up and it will look just stunning. And keep playing with it. But I think that this was a good little project to get started with. And you can see how you can keep adding and adding and going back and changing things. I like this darker right in there. Can you see how you gotta lift it up, look at it. Oh yeah, that could use a little darkness there. Could use a little more over here. And don't be afraid, just do it. Let your ink get thick and it gets a nice heavy coat. You can get really, you can get good coverage. You see that? And I just want a little break that up a little bit so it's not like one big unit of silver um, or boundary. I want it to look like like little highlights, little softness. And, and you can always go over it again with boundary to bring out some of the other elements in the 
leaves, which I might do again. Let me clean out my brush. All I'm using is 91% alcohol, clean out the brush, go back into the foundry. In fact, I'm gonna get a little more, get that clean. I'm gonna use a smaller brush again. Put my foundry out. And then I'm gonna get that small brush. And I wanna just really hit those little balls so they shine. And you see how many times you can go over and really get it beautiful. It just reinforces everything. Any leaves you want, especially near the edge of the top areas, you might want to add more foundry. Like right there. And the more you add, the more metal you get out of it. So now you look like you're working with metal, which is awesome. Now the alloys come in many colors, so you can use all types of uh, metals, basically. So you can make your clay have that beautiful metal look. Now it got a little less on my brush and I'm just gonna go over the top again of those leaves. Just to give it a little more interest. And turn it, see how it looks. And I like it. This one needs a little bit more. And this needs a little bit more alloy. More boundary there, more silver. A little more silver on the edge of this petal that's turning. The leaf. And just dance it. If you want, you can dance this around a little bit here too on the, uh, on the gilded that you added. A little silver and gold. But look at the drama you got on that beautiful piece. And you can keep working it and working it as much as you want. Let's get this off of this right now so you can just see how beautiful this is. Let's put it on a napkin and look how beautiful that is. So I'm not kidding, I've done this and you can make this actually out of a, into a necklace. Um, I made one into a necklace that was very, pretty much this size and I, I got so many people really enjoyed looking at it. Uh, they were all wanting to know where, where, where did I get it, you know, and uh, it's like, you can make it yourself. There. So you can fiddle, fiddle, and faddle. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial, and I look forward to next lesson and project we got for you next time. So, hey, happy sculpting, everybody. Bye.